Welcome to the Chris and Jalen Show presented by Just Cash Clothing and the Empower Sportsnet. I am your host, Chris Arzola. I'm your co-host, Jalen Chapman, CEO of Just Cash Clothing. Joining the show today is star running back from the University of Utah, TJ Fledger. Welcome to the show. Uh, thank you guys for having me. Bro, I appreciate it. Welcome. Welcome. It's an absolute pleasure. <laughs> absolute pleasure. Um, so, TJ, we, we usually start our show off with an empowered moment. Mm-hmm. Um, so, you know, you can tell us a story or you can mention someone that has empowered you along the way. Um, mm-hmm. Please go ahead. Uh, I definitely would just say my, my family in general, you know, has motivated me to, you know, keep striving and keep persevering through any obstacles put my way, you know, on the, on the path to, to my own success. So, I'll I'll probably say my family give me, you know, uh, enough motivation as it is. And I made him on the back of my jersey, so. Mm. For real. Yeah, for, I, for real, for real, yeah. You know what I mean? They always say when you got it's bigger than yourself, you know, that's that keeps you going. So to have your whole family, you know, as your purpose, that's big time right there. For real. Thank you for, thank you for sharing that. Yes, sir. Um, TJ, can you tell us about your little childhood a little bit, mm-hmm. uh, where you're from? Yeah, well, uh, I'm from Pacoma, California, in the San Fernando Valley area. You know, I've been playing, been playing sports my whole life, uh, growing up, uh, football, track. You know, and uh, yeah, uh, growing up, going on from there, always playing sports um, throughout the community. You know, being able, fortunately, at a young age, being able to travel through sports and you know, being able to compete with some of the best across the country. You know, at a young age in football and track. So um, yeah, I definitely give my childhood a lot of dividends and and reason for the, the position I'm in right now, just being able to compete and, you know, back not back down from no challenges, you know, mm-hmm. and to where I've been doing this since I was a kid, you know, so a lot of this, you know, it's just, you know, it's just going, you know, it's just, ch- I'm just chasing it at this point in life. Mm-hmm. You. What age you start playing football? Uh, I've been playing since I was six years old. Um, started off the flag at five, threw the pads on at six, so I, I kind of, I started at six. So for about um, 15 years now. Yeah. Long time. Long yeah. time. You say he's just getting started, too. You know what I mean? He's just yeah. getting started. No. So. And what's all the sports you play growing up? Uh, football, track, really was my main two sports. Uh, I played basketball young, but, you know, I was too aggressive. <laughs> to early. Basketball yeah. was tackling people up. Man, I tried get out. Battling out. I tried baseball. That didn't work. So a football and tag work, <laughs> so I kind of I kind of stayed with those two growing up. Okay, yep, no, I, I like that. So I mean, I want to circle back around. So you talked about how important sports was to you. So, um, you know, talk about your childhood and talk about like, you know, was sports a big big development for your childhood in particular? Mm-hmm. Well, really, uh, I, I would say so. Um, you know, being young, all my I just I had a lot of older cousins. And, for some reason in my family, my generation, it wasn't a lot of boys my age. So I had a lot of older cousins to look up to. You know, football was the route that they was taking. So I, I kind of followed up under their wing and just wanted to be like them. You know, so that I think that helped me a lot. And and I, w- I would definitely say so. Yeah, yeah. No, that makes sense. I Me too. I had a lot of cousins growing up. And same thing. They were actually seven years older than me. So I didn't really have cousins that were real close, you know what I mean, growing up. So the like, same thing for me, it was baseball, right? You know, so a lot of my cousins were playing baseball, different stuff like that. So um, same thing, I kind of looked up to them, you know, and took those different routes and stuff and wanted to do the same things that they were doing. So mm-hmm. family was a huge thing for me growing up. It still is, you know, for sure. For real. But, um, can you tell us about your high school experience? We know you went to two high schools. Mm-hmm. Can you tell us about that? Yeah. So, uh, you know, going into high school, uh, me and my family kind of knew we wanted to be at a, you know, a top school, in the mm-hmm. five five, you know. So when going in, coming out of middle school, uh, when some Pac-5 schools start reaching out, Mission League schools like Shamanah, Alameda schools near me start reaching out, you know, uh, we felt like it was best to, you know, go to end up going to Shamanah. So I ended up taking that route, um, you know, playing as a freshman, you know, uh, on varsity, being able to, you know, achieve achieve some things, you know, make some noise at, at a young at a young age. Mm-hmm. Ended up getting my first offer from Washington as a freshman, and then oh, wow. yeah, and then end up getting SC uh, probably about cut like six months later. And, you know, that kind of pushed things forward and let things roll off as far as my recruitment in high school. So you know, mm-hmm. I don't really, I kind of my recruitment kind of started at a young age. I was fourteen when I got my first offer, 
Mm. So, you know, that, that pretty much sparked my high school career. And, you know, after after uh, my, you know, attending three years, you know, three three pretty good seasons at Chaminade, you know, me and my family felt like it was best to uh, take my talents to IMG Academy in Florida, um, one of the one of the top premier high school programs and as far as developing and just, you know, getting mm -hmm. ready for the next level in college. Mm -hmm. So, you know, we, we decided to take that, that opportunity and challenge and, you know, and then look back. Hmm. That's good. And uh, for people that don't know, we played each other every single year. Narbonne, Shamanad. Yeah. Uh, every year. Yeah, my first year. Mm -hmm. Definitely. We used to yeah. ride it with Narbonne every year. Good scrimmage. Every year. <laughs> so, I mean, that had to be very interesting, though, going from – you're going from California and then now you go to Florida, right? I mean, so at a young age too. So, um, you know, how was that like transferring from California to Florida? Almost like a, almost like a college, basically, in a sense, you were almost going to college in a sense, kind of already as a, you know, as a senior. So kind of what, what was that like immediately that transition? Yeah. Um, well, you know, it, it was different, you know, going into it, I really had no expectations. So mm -hmm. I, you know, I was open to everything, but you know, Looking back at it, you know, being being able to as a grown man looking back at it, you know, I definitely learned a lot from life and football and just life life outside of football mm -hmm. and just you know what, what how different the world is. Being able to see people from different cultures and being able to, you know, under understand that you know there's a lot of people in this world and as as, really? as much as you think you want some, there's some people out there that want it ten times more. So we really want it. You know, you got to turn your grind up a whole nother level. So you know, I think I'm Z for that. Just opening my eyes to see to see everything out there and just being able to compete with a lot of the top guys in the, in the country and make a lot of good friends and a lot of good connections. And, you mm -hmm. know, having that, having that, having that IMG graduate stamp, you know, it, it, you know, it means a lot in a lot of room. So I'm just thankful for the opportunity I had to go there. And, and you know, I don't regret anything. A lot of people ask me, do you regret going to IMG? I always tell them no, because I learned a lot, you know, a lot. So I'm, I'm thankful for the opportunity. Most definitely. Bro, that's that's crazy. That, that's that's they hit the mark, man. Like for real. Like it took me to go to college, right? Because I went from California and then I went to school in Massachusetts and Boston, right? So like same thing. I got to see different culture and different things like that, right? Got to see different people, like what you said. But you experienced it beforehand, you know what I mean? So that that like kind of sets you up to mm -hmm. to you know what I mean to then now going into college. Now you're like, man, I already kind of saw this. I already been there. You were already ahead of the game. So. You know, so take us to like what your recruiting process is like. Obviously, you told us you started at 14 years old. You got your first offer. So, what was that? What was that recruiting process like? You know, from start to finish, and you know, and um, you know why? You know, go go ahead and explain. You know, I guess kind of what that process was like for you. Yeah. So my my recruitment was pretty unique. Um, you know, being so I got offered at a young age. By the time my sophomore junior came around, I was kind of like fed up with it. You know, it was a lot already because mm -hmm. I've been been talking to these schools for so long so you know when i got when it got around my 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 end of my sophomore beginning of my junior year you know i kind of felt like i was at a good point i had took certain visits and i kind of i kind of felt like i was in a good position and you know ready to you know make uh make my decision on where i would like to go mm -hmm. so um yeah i ended up taking i ended up taking a couple of visits to oklahoma okay i fell in love with instantly fell in love with the college town vibe you know the coaches the fans the, the players there and I had just I had fell in love with the uh, the offense. Mm -hmm. so I ended up committing my junior year, um, staying on that commitment, and then enrolling early enrollee early enrolling uh, 2018 to the University of Oklahoma. Got it. Awesome, awesome. Um, TJ, you know what advice can you give to young athletes uh, on the on the topic of recruiting? Mm -hmm. You know, honestly, I would just say you know don't don't worry about the hype, don't get caught in the hype. You know, at a young age. You know, it's hard with social media and stuff like that. But really, I would just say work work on your craft, focus on yourself. You know, the college coaches, they're going to come find you. If you're putting out that film, they're going to find you, especially when you're in big, uh, you know, big states like California, Florida, states like that. Even in the small states, they still going to find you. But I, I, I would say just, you know, just work, just focus on yourself. Work on the things that you need to work on to become the best player you can be to buy, to win that senior year come and you, you can get those real official offers because, you know, a lot of people, a lot of the, the people don't talk about official, unofficial. Like, mm -hmm. there's a big difference between official and unofficial offers. You know, so being able, you know, don't let getting an offer be your be your be your goal. You know, because once you get the offer, you're gonna settle. You know, be be you know, think about being dominant next level. Worry about 
you know, dominating your high school football and being the best at that. Because when I seen you come around and those and you know those real fist offers come in, that's how mm-hmm. you know that's how you gonna know where you are and where you stand. Mm-hmm. Being able to commit there to mm-hmm. go there really commit exactly. Yeah. Right. Yep. Um, but how was your experience like at Oklahoma? Mm-hmm. You know, I had a great, you know, I had a great experience at Oklahoma. You know, a lot of people think just because I, I chanced that things didn't go my way. But, you know, I, I love I love being out there. I love the coach. I love the players. You know, I made a lot of good friends. And, you know, uh, I don't regret nothing about my experience. You know, a lot of good memories. But, um, yeah, I, I love my experience at Oklahoma. Mm, that's good. How was it playing with uh, Kyler Murray? You know, he won the Heisman and all that. Yeah, that was big. You know, playing with Kyler, you know, it was special. He was unique. You know, he, yeah. uh, you know. Seeing him in high school, you know, mm-hmm. being like the caddy was young, watch him, yeah. So, you know, you all know him. So, like, when you finally got to play with him, it was like, wow, one of the fastest players, you know, I ever played with. And, you know, something I, something I learned from him was just ultimate confidence. You know, he always, no matter what, you know, he had that swagger and that confidence that, was like, nobody could miss him. So, mm-hmm. I kind of, you know, I kind of took that from him and kind of, you know, tried to add that to my game and just having ultimate confidence, just seeing how free you can play when you have that, too. Mm. And Damn. he's like a short quarterback too, so you have to have right. something special about him. Yeah, yeah, that chip on the shoulder. Yeah, you have to always. You know, you always have. Yeah, I mean, you always have to as a as a player. So, man, interesting, In- interesting to hear about that. You know what I mean? Interesting to to hear. You know, people such as him because he's like you said, he's won every like in every step basically that he's played. You know what I mean? Like he killed it in in high school. You know, he killed it in college. I mean, obviously, you know what he's doing now in the pros, right? You know, one of the top QBs right now. So it's interesting to see how you um, you see people develop that at a, at a young age, right? And then carry that with them throughout their entire life, you know? So, um, but that's what it takes to get there. You know what I mean? It takes ultimate confidence in yourself because, again, no one's putting in the work. You know what I mean? You, you, you're you doing it every day, not anybody else. So, you know, bet on yourself. That's what I say for sure. Uh, I think you, what were you going to say? Yeah. Uh, one more. Oh, was it me? Okay. So, okay. Okay. It is me. All right. So, you know, you talked about obviously that you didn't have a, a bad time at Oklahoma. So, you know, you entered the, the, the transfer portal this past mm-hmm. year, you know, this coming year, you're going to be playing at the university of Utah, you know, mm-hmm. go Utes, uh, pac 12 now. So why did you choose, uh, Utah to start mm-hmm. off with? And then, you know, what was your, uh, process like, uh, entering mm-hmm. the transfer portal? Well, you know, uh, me and my family had decided after the season that, you know, we would like to, you know, enter the portal, you know, see see what new opportunities can arise and what could present themselves. And, you know, mm-hmm. luckily I was blessed enough to have, you know, a lot of schools reach out and, you know, show the interest. And really when it came down to me, you know, I kind of – it was kind of what, what – it was kind of me asking myself what did I want out of this transfer? What was I looking for? And, you know, it was production. So then I, you know, I, I, I clocked it down to – out of production, where where can I position myself to have to put myself in this situation to gain the most production, you know, to get to that next level, you know, because we, you know, we all have aspirations, you know, to get the next goal and get to the NFL. So I was just trying to set myself for the best position to, you know, make that happen and put the ball in my hands. And I felt like Utah with the tradition that running back and, you know, a great coach I got to develop me and a great system around the running back, I feel like it would be, it would be a good decision to to make a, make that move out here. Yeah. Yeah. And you know, what, so what was your, what was that process like going through the transfer portal? Mm-hmm. Well, really, uh, you know, sooner, as soon as you hop in the portal, schools reach out with interest. So I, I was just back at home during winter break, mm-hmm. uh, late December, early January on zoom calls with different schools, you know, talking about how they can, cause I couldn't take no visits like normal because okay. of COVID. So that, yeah, that that was, yeah. Cause you know, I was either, I was going to admit it, I'm going to go to a school that I might not have visited yet, okay. like Utah. So uh-huh. we was basically having all these Zoom meetings online, you know, just talking football, talking football, multiple phone calls, a lot of prayers, a lot of, you know, family just family decisions, you know, and mm-hmm. I over two weeks span to make that decision. So, you know, it was, it was we, weren't, we didn't really have time on our side, but I know I made the right decision. So, you know, what do you know anything of kind of about their offense right now? Is it, is it, you know, fill me in. Is it more someone that doesn't probably know the youth's mm-hmm. offense? Is it more as a pro style offense, or yeah, um, you know, what yeah, what kind of attracted you, you know, mm-hmm. to the offense? I guess. 
Yeah, uh, pro style offense where you know the 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 offense moves around a running back. It ain't no secret, you know. Mm-hmm. The the running back is a center fault of the the offense, and he makes the he makes the machine go. So. <laughs> ain't nothing wrong with that, baby. You know what I mean? <laughs> you walk right in and start 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 handling start handling and working. So sounds good to me. Exactly. So you. But yeah, um, one of the things I want to talk about is life beyond the game, life beyond football. Mm-hmm. I want to talk about, like for me, all my yeah. friends. Like, what is your plan after football? Mm-hmm. But what you want to do? Yeah. Well, uh, you know, definitely, definitely would like to you know use all the the the. How would I say revenue, it? like revenue, revenue, like yeah, the revenue from the league and the connections that that I, that I made through football to you know be my own entrepreneur, my own boss, and you know get back to my community in different ways. Um, I got some ideas mapped out, but that's gonna be coming uh, towards the uh, fall of 2020, 2021, You know, as I head into my draft year, but I got a lot of things planned. You know, just being able to give back and just being able to keep my you know my money. Flipping for my family, you know, and just mm-hmm. being able to, you know, the goal is to make money while you sleep. So that's the that's the plan right now. For real. That's yep. The, that's the goal. Shit. Yep. For real. And um, so basically, and the mission around my brand is financial literacy, trying to educate people on that, like stocks, mm-hmm. real estate, yeah. trying yeah. to make money work for themselves. For me. Yeah. And uh, do you know anything about that? Man, so uh, financial literacy. That's that's something uh, I'm really starting to. Uh, hear about you know especially watching like I am athlete podcast you know mm-hmm. hearing those NFL guys talk about it you know just being mm-hmm. able to flip your money and being able to have to find the right people that are able to flip your money and not you know finesse you or just or understanding that you know a lot of times these money flips you know is is setting up you're setting yourself up for years later you know a lot of people they want to put their money in and get it back now but you know being able to have that patience and learn what comes with having patience in a lot of these stocks and stuff like that and how it can end up, you know, being very beneficial to your, your uh, family wealth. So definitely. Yeah, basically trying to make generational wealth. That's the, mm-hmm. that's the main exactly. goal. Yeah. yeah. Exactly. Uh, yep. I want to actually circle back to kind of what you said about um, the I Am uh, Athlete podcast. So actually I did hear um, some stuff about like financial literacy on their like I think Chad was talking about some stocks that he kind of messed up on a little bit and stuff kind of in the past. And, and, you know, I mean, I'm sure you're, you're going to start understanding this and start getting it. And I'm sure you probably already have, but you know what I mean? You're going to have people that are going to come at you with different ventures and different this and different things like this. But um, like you said, you know, you just got to be smart with your money, have the right people around you and, you know, make that, make that uh, money work for you. You know what I mean? And not make it work for other people because you always hear stories about, athletes getting swindled you know what i mean like about certain things and stuff and man it's pretty sad when you when you hear about those things you know what i mean for the money that you you guys are working hard for you know what i mean so um it's good that you're understanding this uh earlier beforehand right and, and putting yourself in a in a situation um that's going to help you in the long run before you know before you even before that even happens so um it's good to hear that you know what i mean and, and i always tell Jalen, it's it's awesome because his motivation to help people understand financial literacy at a younger age, you know, like it it, is seriously, like I see it, you know what I mean? Like I see people at a younger age starting to really understand financial literacy, you know? So um, it's good to hear that. Sir. For real. Um, Jalen, do you have anything else that you want, you want to talk about? That's about it. Pretty much it. Uh, Awesome. Well, I want to thank TJ uh, Pledger for coming on today. TJ, thank you. You know, it was a pleasure having you on and, and, you know, uh, learning more about you good luck this coming season go utes um give a shout out one more time for uh for the audience and stuff um to your uh social media so you know that you can obviously go take a look at your social media as well most definitely uh yeah you can follow me on instagram at tj underscore pleasure too and uh you can follow me on twitter at underscore uno underscore tj thank you guys for having me thank you Jalen. go ahead they follow my Instagram at jchapman 17 and my clothing brand, Just Cash Clothing, and at JustCashClothing.com. Awesome. Thank you again, TJ, for coming on. Seriously, it was an absolute pleasure. Uh, Jalen, thank you again, obviously, for uh, being that baby co-host. I love it. I love it. Um, thank you again. Um, please go to JustCashClothing.com, EmpowerLV.org. Follow my Instagram at crzola underscore 19 and Chris and Jalen show on Instagram. 
Thank you very much. Peace out. Thank you for